Hello and welcome to One on One with yours truly, Jeff Dancer. When you talk about legends, ain't none greater than the one and only Teresa Edwards, one of the greatest Bulldogs ever. Five Olympic medals, four of them gold. First ever class of UGA Circle of Honor. Also one of the greatest Cairo syrup makers of all time. Teresa, get everybody caught up to date uh, with what's going on with one of the favorite daughters of the red and black. Oh, my God. I think I'm doing what everybody else is doing. I'm trying to get through quarantine. <laughs> also, I wish everybody safety and good health out there. Um, other than that, I'm writing. Jeff, I've become a, a pretty good author, I think. But I'm working on, I've already published a self-published book, Dream with Faith, Legacy Poetry which I enjoy tremendously, um, really kind of getting shout outs to teammates, kind of, um, you know, recognizing history in basketball, um, motivational quotes and, and poems and um, family members. Other than that, I teach. I teach PE and fitness uh, at a, an amazing school here in New York, Trinity. And um, so we're working really hard to prepare ourselves for the fall um, for our, all of our students here, and I'm working to finish a project. As we know, Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi, I think both of them, if not well, just Sue, are really coming hard after that fifth Olympics again um, to tie my record, which would be awesome. But we at um, me and Amazon are trying to make sure we get my story told, so a part of my story told prior to the Olympics playing. Your story is so incredible. I think part of what stands out to me is that in 1984, at those remarkable uh, Olympic Games in Los Angeles, you were the youngest member on the team. I think you were 19 at the time. And, and then by the time you were on number five, setting the record for Olympians, you had become the elder statesman. So uh, take it through that journey with Team USA. And also, to, you had just finished your sophomore year. At you still had two years to go, and you already had an Olympic gold medal. Exactly, exactly. It, you know, I really didn't see it coming. You know, like you said earlier, coming from a small town like Cairo, Georgia, um, you know, as a kid, just happy to play ball. I'm the only girl of five kids from my mother and a lot of boys in the neighborhood. And we did a lot of sports. We did a lot of running around. You were told to get outdoors and do something. So we went outside and did a lot as I was growing up as a kid. So I didn't see five Olympics, uh, you know, as a kid. I didn't even know what the Olympics was when I was growing up in Cairo, Georgia. But lo and behold, after Coach Landers pushing and shoving me and telling me, kid, this is something everybody in the world would love to do, and you're over here doubting yourself. Um, I went for it as the youngest one um, out there. I don't know if I was the youngest one out there, but I was definitely fortunate enough to be a part of the roster and to be the youngest on that 1984 team, playing for Pat Head Summit. And that was, that was an experience in itself. She was amazing. She was uh, incredibly a twin to Coach Landers at that time. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, all coaches are about crazy, aren't they? But <laughs> and I grew through a process. They both, between Coach Landers and Coach uh, Summon at that time, uh, my game grew tre tremendously. I didn't get to play much in 84. So if you don't get to play much, you got to go back. You got to get that play in time. And that's what 88 was for me is let me get off the bench. Let me be someone of importance um, to the team. So making the team um, second time around, headed to Seoul career with Coach Yao, K. Yao. Um, great experience for me. I became a team leader with um, Ann Donovan, the late Ann Donovan and late K. Yao. Um, and that I grew. Katrina's was, that was Katrina McLean's first one. So we were teammates on that. And um, for all you guys that don't remember Katrina McLean, um, big George Bulldog. Uh, what's, what's next? Oh, you know, because we lost and we got the bronze in, in Barcelona, I don't want to remember it, but that's what happened. <laughs> we got the bronze in Barcelona, then uh, came back to Atlanta, recaptured the gold. And I, I really thought that was it for me in Atlanta. I thought that this would be a great way to go out of the game. And no, nah, it wasn't done. Figured one more. I think I heard the, one of the Australian players say they would get us um, when, we, when we came back to Australia four years later. And I was like, hmm. Not on my watch. So I kind of stayed motivated. Played five. You also, you touched because that, that Sydney in 2000, you touched uh, three different decades. Not uh, too many athletes could say they won gold medals in three different decades. Now, Teresa, for me, be, being a lifelong bulldog, and uh, you, you, we got two old dogs right here talking. 
the, the, I always wished I was 10 years older because when you think back to the era you were at Georgia with Herschel and Terry Hogue and Kevin Butler and Dominique and James. Just, just went to the Hawks right before I got there. Just missed <laughs> Yeah, you're right. And, and Vern and James Banks and all that. Michael Pernford. Remember Glenn Torrance track and field? Oh, oh my gosh. Glenn was just the greatest. There, there were so many athletes here, so many legendary coaches, so many legendary athletes. D did you guys – I mean, I've got to think you all, it's one thing for coaches and your own teammates. I got to think when you and Katrina are going to class with, with Gwen Torrance and Michael Pernforce and Kevin Butler, you, you guys are all pushing each other too, right? Well, Michael stayed in the same dormitory with us. Yeah, that was cool. Um, you know, we didn't know who we were at that age. <laughs> we had no idea. We were just loving life. We were being young. We were, we were exploring. We were growing together. We were all like, um, Man, we had a blast. a blast. I had a blast in college, man. O'Hall's was was the place to be. Um, once basketball season was over, we really engulfed ourselves with um, all the student body. Had a lot of friends in the dorms and all the other the athletes. You might remember back then. Now they have it very different. Back then, the female athletes were or most of us were we were at O'Hall's, mm -hmm. and that was. Everyone's dorms. I think maybe the only co-ed dorm on campus at that time. So we partied in that dorm. I mean, I didn't party. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but now a lot of great days, a lot of good athletes, the tennis players, golfers, you name it. We were all, man, we didn't know who we were. We were living, growing, you know, it was amazing. Doing great things though. Georgia was booming in every sport. It was. It, it was really the greatest of times. And with that, Therese, and with all you've done, again, your international legacy is just incredible. I, in my opinion, uh, as I've said before, the only thing I've lo loved longer than George is my parents. And uh, <laughs> in my opinion, along with the medals, your other greatest accomplishment is being in that first ever class of the circle of honor for the University of Georgia. I bet you, you were talking about the, the best of the best with, with Coach McGill and, and Frank Sinkwich and Charlie Trippi and Bob McWhorter and Teresa Edwards in there. What does that mean to you? You know, as the years pass by, it becomes more and more prominent within your, in, your, in my mind. It becomes a, a, fi a fixture that I know is, should be there for, ingrained forever. And when you say forever, that's a long time, right? So – to be amongst the greatest to ever walk the grounds here, to, to ever um, put on uniforms and, and represent UGA at that magnitude is huge for me. I don't really think, even at that time, man, I don't know if I really knew what they were saying. I, you know, I was still playing when they put me on that wall. I was still playing pro ball. So I'm like, okay, I don't, I'm not ready to quit. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know some of the guys that was going on the wall with me that day. <laughs> so I had to learn the history, you know. And But to be the part of the first group is to be distinguished. And I think I should hold myself, you know, hold, my, hold that dear to my heart. And I, I'm, I'm really honored, really, to just be fixated and to be a, a permanent fixture at the University of Georgia when it comes to athletics. Well, there's none better, no question about it, Teresa. Now – uh, going through your your incredible days in Athens, uh, I have to ask you, uh, mutual friends to us both, the great man, he yelled at me a couple of times. Maybe one of them was justified. You got a good favorite Andy Lander story or two? Oh, we have tons of Andy Lander stories. I mean, there's – whenever you get to thinking about it, you try to top one after the other. But, I mean, but the man is amazing, though. You know, I, I listen to other people describe – coach landers around the world and around the country throughout my career and um uh, you know you can't say anything bad about him no. i'm gonna definitely rise up and fight for my man right but when i get to tell him the stories it sounds like he was killing us so i don't know i mean maybe it's my fault the way i tell the story <laughs> you know you talk to guys and that, that sat you know old basketball players and football players that would sit around in the coliseum and watch his practice and you know like they don't understand what how we did it and how hard he was and but I had to recall something. I had to say, you know, Coach Landis was quite young when he was coaching us. And me being a kid, I, don't, I didn't realize how young he was. He was energetic. He was enthusiastic. He was a winner. Um, 
and he knew how to get the best out of us. So I think one of the most funnest moments I've ever had in practice that I'll never forget is a time that he was yelling at Katrina McClain. And he couldn't get her to be aggressive. Katrina was a very finesse player. And he couldn't get her to be aggressive. He wanted her to. And he's, he, he wanted to be an example. So the one player that he would always kind of have to kind of tighten the wheel on almost every day in practice was Janet Harris. Okay? Janet's from Chicago. Janet would get if, – if Janet was getting talked to or spoken to early on in the circle before practice began, you knew you were okay. All right? So you were happy. But you could tell when you're buying your time to have an opportunity to prove something to someone. So Coach Landers, to, to show his example to Katrina, how aggressive he wanted her to be, he chose Janet as a target. Wrong day. Wrong day. Janet saw it coming. He started charging towards her. He was going to get down, low squat, turn, pivot, ask for the ball. He went. Diving down to the low block, Janet braced herself. I swear to Jesus, she didn't move an inch. She just braced herself, Jeff. As soon as Coach Landers hit Janet, I mean, he went pow, straight to the floor, man. We didn't know how to laugh because we were scared to death. In that locker room after practice, we could not stop laughing at <laughs> how hard she hit him. He hits the floor, then he gets up. Pull his bridges up. You go, and that's how you do it. You hear me? <laughs> Man, you, and for every day that Janet ever wanted to get Coach Landers, that was the day, man. It was too funny. It's too funny. And that was, that, that, you can see stuff like that every day. He'd come after us. And, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing about it, though. Oh, he's the best. He told me a great story on Janet that, uh, that we had a player and he had, I don't think it was you, but he had come up with a play for, for her to run. And uh, the first two possessions, he passed it to Janet and she scored both times. He still called timeout. We're up four to nothing. And, you know, typical Andy, we, we still made the baskets. He's yelling at the player. And she said, well, Janet said, if I didn't pass it to her, she was going to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> I know it wasn't me. Trust me. <laughs> Teresa, I, I wanted to ask you, too, you know, there, there, there's so many things that, that we could talk about here. I don't know if you remember this, but in, in, in December of 2002, I was in a really good mood. We had beaten Tech 51-7. We had won the SEC championship in football, but we lost to Tech in basketball, women's hoops, first time ever. I don't know if you remember this. The team that next morning was about to get on one of those famous boogie buses. Our Lady Dogs fans will know what we're talking about. Before they departed for Murfreesboro, Tennessee, that, uh, that first ballot circle of honor legend Teresa Edwards uh, got on the bus and let them know how unacceptable that was. Do you recall that, and uh, do you remember part of what you said? I remember – I recall I – I recall um, – I think they were at Windy Hill – not far from my house at that time. And they were at a restaurant. They were just pulling, getting ready to pull off. You're right. And um, I don't recall exactly what I said because I knew you can't. You know, it wasn't my team. It was Coach Landers' team. But when you're Georgia Lady Dog, you never feel like you're apart from it. So you're always connected. So for me, we never – I mean, that was just one team you don't lose to. You know, you just – that was un, un, unheard of. Like, it was like – I hated to play Georgia Tech. That was too easy, okay? It was like, I didn't even want to play in the game. So when that happened, I knew the ties had turned. I knew things had changed. Definitely in, in the roster of players and the, and the type of, I don't know. When I, I, I don't know how to say that. I want to be ginger because I want I wanted people to understand that I know we're supposed to lose. You know, that's, that comes with sports. That's the game. So there's a way to win and a way to lose. You know, and I just wanted them to understand if you're going to go out, you go out blazing. You know, if, you're, if they're going to beat you, they're going to take it. You're not going to give it to them. There's a pride factor in wearing this UGA thing. And it's something that I know Janet Harris, Wanda Holloway, Rhonda Malone, Cynthia Collins, Lisa O'Connor, Susie Gardner, Katrina McClain, Amanda Abrams. I can go on. The list goes on and on. We, we build something. 
And I felt a lot of pride in that. And I want them to know we built something. We wanted them to uphold it. And I, I just felt it strong. But what exactly I said, I don't know. But that's what I meant. Well, I, one of the members of that team was, was now the first lady of Georgia football, Mary Beth Lysette Smart. And uh, she, she also never will forget it. That team rallied after that. We went on to the Sweet 16 that year. Uh, I, I never will forget it. Now, you should have been coming. You should have. <laughs> Going. Now, ter Teresa, for you, you were part of some of the greatest teams in Georgia history. One thing Coach Lander said, he said, I'm telling you, we didn't lose much back then. But if we did, you did not want any part of us that next game. He said, you guys were snarling mad coming off the bus if we came up short the game before. It's very true. You, I mean, the, the next game couldn't come fast enough. It, it really couldn't. We were that type of team. It didn't. That never, that was, we didn't have common sense enough, Jeff, to think that we were supposed to lose, bottom line. Just didn't. That didn't feel good. That didn't sit well. You never, I couldn't sleep for miss recap, recalling every shot I missed, every turnover I made. I couldn't sleep. So, until the next game. Two final fours in your career, 1983 and 1985, obviously two of the best teams that we've ever had. Uh, the, the 85 team had great expectations. The 83 team in many ways came out of nowhere. Is there one of them that you perhaps, I guess it's asking, you know, like what's your favorite pet or, or who's your favorite kid? But uh, kind of talk about the, the 83 and, and 85 and uh, what makes each one of them unique to you. Um, the first one, as you say, we didn't, we didn't. Matter of fact, Lisa O'Connor and myself, we were freshmen on the starting five finally worked our way up before we got there. And we were playing quite well, but we were young. We made a lot of freshman mistakes, um, but we didn't know where we were. It's, it's great. It was a great term, Cinderella team. Right. We, we had no idea. And I remember that game very well. We actually played against um, Cheryl Miller in USC. We lost to them. And I remember all the nuances that I wasn't prepared for. The clock went out for some reason late in the game, and they couldn't restore it. So they had to give us the time from the sidelines. That affected me tremendously. I'll never forget it. I grew from that, that aspect of, of man, you know, knowing, knowing how to manage the games. I learned how to manage games much better um, after that Final Four because I, I really thought we were going to win. There was no doubt in my mind. I, I didn't care if Miller Twins or whoever was on USC's team. We were supposed to win. That was an amazing time for me. Um, I think I just because I came from a high school program, we just won a state championship at Georgia from Cairo. And winning was just my pedigree. So I didn't I, – no one told me I was ever supposed to not beat anyone. So um, then every year I thought we had a chance to win the Final Four or win an NCAA championship at Georgia. And the last one hurt the most, of course. Um, we played Old Dominion. And I fouled out. That one really, really hurt. That's all I can remember is – um, not fouling out all season, being very, very cognizant of, of how important I was to be on the floor and picking up all those quick fouls. I never let the official that fouled me out, I never let her forget it. I will never let her forget it. Every time I see her, that's all I think about is like, how, I mean, when you look back over the tape, Coach Landers and I are still bitter over that one. We can tell you the same story. It just doesn't look fair. <laughs> Uh, your, 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 your longtime radio announcer, whenever said official has done Georgia games, often does uh, bring that up as well. I was uh, 12 years old when that happened and uh, yeah. went to a pretty darn good good temper tantrum there. Um, that being said, moving on. Uh, you, you, I'd want to play that game over. If I had to play any game over, that's the game I'd want to play over. Yeah, well, it was taken from us, and uh, those are always the hardest. Now. On the happier thoughts, Cairo, Georgia, Bulldog legacy. By the way, we just had a, a tremendous young pitcher named Emerson Hancock from Cairo, who was a six pick in the draft. You, Bill Stanfield, Bobby Walden, Lewis Gady, all these great – Joey Hester, who was at Georgia when you were here. Hey, Joey. Uh, what's in the water in Cairo, Georgia, just the home of Bulldog legends? Hey, you know what? Every now and then, some of us drink the right – from the right spring and we get, we get out of there. <laughs> oh yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's just homegrown. It's, it's wholesome living. And if you do it right, you get a, you get a good opportunity to make a good living in sports. Well, I always said I grew up in a small town and I've always thought the best athlete 
is a small town Southern athlete. And certainly uh, you, you and Herschel would be two great examples. There's a, there, you really can't get into much trouble. There, there's nothing to do but go outside in the heat and play ball. That, that's about it. Really, you got to run the trouble. I mean, you got to go find it if you want trouble in a small town. When I was growing up, I have no idea what it is these days. Well, T, I think one thing I'll leave you with, I could go on for hours with you here, but, but sports, it's so important. It's what I work in. It's what you've worked in. You're one of the, the greatest ever for so many of us who love it. it. It's a great release. It, it's a great distraction. It, it's a great unifier for so many people. Sports, bringing people together. So getting it back going again, I, I just think it's so important to uplift everybody's spirits and help bring everyone together. Absolutely. Sports has been a savior in many categories. It's a character. It's a, it, to me, it builds a lot of character, shows character, it reveals character. And um, it's, for me, it's allowed me to travel the world, man. It's allowed me to live, to make a living, to take care of my family. Uh, it's allowed me a joy. I was training a couple boys earlier today and I was sharing with them how I would love, I used to go into basketball gym and just lay down on the floor in the dark and was happy the world could end and I'd be okay because I was where I wanted to be. And I was letting them know how to, you know, how that driving force, that gift, you're born with a gift and you have an opportunity to use it and not only use it for your benefit, but for the benefit of people who get the joy of watching you. And when you do that, you want to give them your absolute best. You know, you want to lay down that night going, that was it. God, I gave it all I could today. Tomorrow I want more. And, you, you know, I, was, I think I'm truly blessed. I, I have a gift. I used it to the max when I was playing. I'm using it more, more and more now. I see I, I never really wanted to be a coach. I remember my high school coach telling me, Coach Cindy Kozlowski, she was a Florida girl coaching at Cairo. She was like, you know, you got to be a coach. You got to be a coach. And I was like, I don't want to coach. Don't want to be a coach. And now all I do is wake up and I'm thinking of my drills. The next drill I'm going to get the next kid. So <laughs> you can't run from it. It's a gift. It's inside of you. It needs to come out. So uh, I think I hope sports get back to where it was. I, I hope we get to enjoy just the, the human aspect of people. I hope I get to give you a hug the next time I see you and not worrying about a, a virus. Um, I, I really do. I'm praying like crazy that we can get back to normal, which I know normal is never is going to return. Um, I, I hope we get to get back to better in the world as a whole. And I hope sports has plays it, its role in making sure that people are believing again, uplifted, have an outlook and, um, you know, they have something to cheer about again. Teresa, there is uh, none better. Uh, as great a bulldog as there is and as great an athlete and basketball player uh, as you were an even better person uh, in, in the darkness, light <laughs> shot brightest and you truly are a light and uh, can't wait to see you again. Proud of Cairo, proud of the Georgia Bulldogs. I appreciate you taking the time tonight. I really do. Thank you so much, T. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate you appreciating me, man. Thanks a lot. I love you, guy. I love you. She is. I love you, Teresa Edwards, the one and only. Five Olympic medals, four golds, two Final Fours, first circle of honor, Cairo cert maker, Georgia Bulldog, Team USA legend, Teresa Edwards. Bulldogs, woo!